Hello everyone. Hello, hello. I'm gonna give everyone some time to join. Alyssa, hey girl. It's loud outside. Hi. Hello angels. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Attunement. I'm Lauren Haregi, and no, I'm just kidding. Um, welcome to my beach. I'm sitting on the floor in a position that I thought was going to be comfortable, and it isn't, so excuse me while I find a pillow to sit on. <laughs> Conveniently placed. All right. Hi, babies. All right. Happy Easter to those of you who celebrate Easter. Happy Ishtar to those who understand the truth. Um, um, also wanted to say hi in general. I love you. All right, so to begin this new episode, we're going to do a check-in with our breath. We're going to start with some deep breaths, some deep calming breaths, and we're gonna do three of them. So first we're gonna inhale. And exhale. Bring in peace, let out any negativity, any stress, just let it out. Three deep breaths. <laughs> she asleep. Nah, bitch, I'm breathing. What? <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome. Um, so today, you know, I don't have as structured of a thing. I feel like last episode I was so nervous about starting something that I did like three things in one. Um, so this episode, I'm just going to kind of take an opportunity to talk about something that I feel like, first of all, is something that is on all of our hearts right now, probably due to the current events. Um, but also just something that I feel like we struggle with as a collective in general. I know that I've struggled with it majorly, and that is anxiety. Woo! It's really fun. Not, not fun at all, not fun at all. Oye, mommy, hey, come here, come here. You cannot be yelling, I'm doing a live. So, respect. This bitch be yelling and barking at everything. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about anxiety. <sighs> anxiety, anxiety, and I will preface by saying, I am no expert in anything I am simply a human being who's alive and experiencing, same way we all are. So um, today I wanted to address a topic that I feel like my fans have been really vocal about feeling and that we've always kind of, um, you know, meshed on. Oh my God, this child. Cleo, Clee, Clee. Mommy, come here, please. Come here, come here, mommy. There you go, relax. There we go, we gotta, we should sunbathing now. Okay. All right, so, I'm just gonna, let me get her inside for a moment. Oh yeah, hey. Oh, she cannot be outside and not bark. It's just impossible. All right, so back to the point, the topic of in question is anxiety so first things first what is anxiety what is anxiety well anxiety for me is this feeling in my chest and in my stomach um, when I'm feeling out of alignment where I just get this intense panic nervousness um, you know shortness of breath loss of sense of self kind of like a disconnection um, that leads me to question myself and question my confidence and question my abilities 
to do and operate in the world. Um, I think that I've struggled with anxiety my whole life, um, even before the fame shit. Uh, the fame shit really, 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 really took it up a notch though, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I struggled beforehand because I was in school and I was, um, you know, held to a specific standard about performance. And just on top of, you know, schoolwork and all of the anxieties that came with that, it was also the this societal pressure to fit in that I felt heavy anxiety over. Like I, t total disclaimer, but this is the truth about myself, before school and high school I would throw up. And not because I like caused myself to throw up or um, had an eating disorder, thank God. It was strictly because of my nerves and my anxiety. And I was, I would literally every morning before school, I just had so much pent up energy about what do I, um, like how do I function? How, do I, how can I be myself when I don't feel like myself or, or when everyone around me is expecting me to be something else? And I think that that's something we struggle with as a collective in society. We, there's this kind of like standard normal that we're all supposed to prescribe to. And I think that anxiety, a lot of anxiety for me and for us, I think stems from this pressure to fit in. And when we don't fit in, the anxiety stems from another space, which is the feeling of lack of deservability. This feeling that we are not deserving of love, that we are not deserving of anything positive in life, that we don't deserve our dreams, that we can't and we're not good enough. Um, and I think that's the main thing is that feeling of not, not feeling like you're good enough. Um, and it's a lie. I'm here to tell you it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. It's the ego, baby. Anxiety comes through when you are out of alignment and there are many different ways that we excuse me okay so there are many different ways that we can fall out of alignment and what do I mean by alignment does anyone kind of know what alignment means feel free to submit your responses <laughs> mm. All right, well, I'm just gonna say it. So being out of alignment is when, and it, it, again, this all depends on what you believe and how you feel, but most of us, I think, can consent to the fact that there is a universal being, force, energy, that has our best interests at heart, that wants for us to reach our dreams, that wants us to be our full versions of ourselves, that wants us to love ourselves intimately, and just really come into being, come into being who we are truly meant to be and who we're designed to be. Um, for me, that is spirit. Um, and when I'm out of alignment with spirit, when I'm not checking in and praying, when I'm not in gratitude, when I am doing things that I know I should not be doing, as far as like my future holds, like if I'm making decisions right now in this moment, that I know in the long run will affect me negatively, that's when I now feel my panic and anxiety. Because before when I didn't have a consciousness about my panic and anxiety and I didn't really know what it was, I would just numb it. <laughs> Straight the fuck up. Like I was like, oh, I'm feeling kind of crazy. Let me smoke some weed. Let me drink. Let me fuck. Let me, whatever it is that I, you know, would use to numb myself, TV, um, just mindless jargon, um, distracting myself with social media, distracting myself with opinions of others, um, kind of feeding that, you know, that ego self that was telling me that I wasn't good enough, I would go and feed that with negative comments or, you know, just sometimes when you just like scroll the internet, like you just, it doesn't feel good. You just don't feel good. You get even more anxiety because you get into the space of, comparison and you know your productivity levels and questioning yourself and I think that that's kind of what I would do is just numb it um, and just kind of make it an other thing you know like it wasn't like anxiety is part of me but like eh, I can compartmentalize it and I can put it somewhere else right um, but what I've been learning in my journey as I've grown and as I've become more conscious and aware of my feelings and what they mean because you know I'm a cancer, 
Cancer Moon, Scorpio, I'm mean, sorry, Cancer Rising, no, Lauren, Cancer Sun, I know when I was born, Cancer Sun, Scorpio Moon. So I'm a very intense feeler, and a lot of us who are feelers in this world, especially, and I'm also empathic, so when you are an intense feeler, that anxiety can be driven up to all kinds of levels because you can even take on other people's anxiety. You can even take on other people's worries and fears and not even know that you have them attached to yourself and not even know that it's happening, you know? So I think for me, one of the breaking points that I had was reading The Power of Now. <laughs> um, this book by Eckhart Tolle, it helped change my life. Not one thing in particular has changed my life except spirit. But I've always been connected to God. I just, you know, have gone through different phases of denying and returning and denying and returning, as I'm sure we could all say. Um, but this book truly gave me a perspective that I had not really, you know, prep, like thought of before. It's like we've all thought of, you know, being present, living in the moment, right? Anxiety usually stems from either dwelling on past mistakes, things that you cannot change, or worrying about the future and where you're supposed to be going versus where you feel like you're going versus, you know, the inevitable unknown, which is really the truth about where you're going. Nobody really knows what's going to unfold. The best that you can do is stay in alignment, and that will help um, recenter your yourself, your being. For me, the power of now just helped me kind of call into my attention the present moment to take notice of when i was straying from the present moment to take notice of when i was not in my truth and choosing for whatever reason to do the opposite and actually usually the reason that i would do the opposite is self-sabotage it's this unconscious you know habit of I kind of felt like safe in my anxiety, you know, because when I when I feel like things are going wrong, then I don't really have to be held accountable for the fact that I am the only one that can make things go right. You know what I mean? And so that anxiety, you know, the main, main source I feel like is that feeling of not being good enough, of not deserving, not deserving whatever it is that you want in life. And that is just I've learned simply untrue. It is a story that the ego tells itself to protect you, to protect yourself from feeling pain. And unfortunately, in this lifetime, pain is a thing, but it is not the end of it all. And when we're living in constant pain, it is usually out of this disconnect from the present moment. And we're living in our fears, we're living in our pasts, we're living in our futures, and we haven't established who we are right now. So for me, um, this book helps put a lot of things into perspective for me. For me, praying helps me tremendously when I'm anxious, uh, just kind of giving it up to a higher power. I know that that's way easier said than done because trust me, when I was first told that, I was like, what the fuck do you mean, let it go? Like, that shit's in my DNA. Like, I cannot let it go. <laughs> but you can. You can let it go. And it's not easy to let it go. It doesn't just go like we're like, okay, God, take it. It comes out of you. Like, no. <laughs> it takes a second for you to come to terms with why you're holding on to it. And a big part of that is feeling through it. So if you're numbing your anxiety, which is something that I've done I still do, like I'm not even gonna front. This is a journey that I'm still on as well. Everything that I talk to you guys about is like shit, I know, but like shit that I'm experiencing, shit that I'm going through as well. So I just want you to know that when you're in kind of these spaces with me and you're learning about stuff or talking with me about stuff, that that's kind of what's up. Um, another thing that helps me a lot, well, besides praying, are different like crystals that I have. Um, so this is, this is my rose quartz, and this is to promote love and for your heart chakra to just kind of be in centered love state. And I use this particular piece because it fits like really perfectly in my hand, um, kind of like a protector. Uh, anytime that I'm feeling out of alignment, I sleep with this by my bedside and I just kind of hold it and have it in my purse all day and just make sure that I'm 
I don't even really focus on it too hard. I just I just have it with me to to keep that as my focus. Um, another beautiful one for anxiety in specific, and this this beautiful crystal was gifted to me by my amazing management team. Shout out Elena and Brenda. I love you guys. Look how beautiful she is. This is amethyst. She stays by my bedside. Oh my god, I love her. But she's um, amethyst is like super super helpful in helping to calm anxiety and helping to um, relieve you of your stress. And granted, like crystals are energy based beings and things not beings they're not sentient beings but you know they're they have energy <laughs> and so energy works in a way where intention is the most important part of it. So if your intention for these crystals when you're around them is for them to help you, they will help you. If you just think they're rocks that are just sitting there, they're probably just gonna be rocks sitting there. Everything is about what you give it, intention that you give it. So with that said, back to the anxiety, intentionality is everything. You have to want to feel better. And a lot of the time, it's easier to stay in the comfortability of what you know and what you feel and that comfortability comes from it being a constant and a habit for us. My anxiety was a habit for me, you know what I mean? Um, it was something that was like a blanket. It's like, oh, I have anxiety, I can't do that. Oh, no, 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 I have anxiety. I, like, I'm not even gonna address that. I'm not even gonna answer those emails. I'm not even gonna do it because I have so much anxiety about what that's gonna cause. Um, and I'm here to tell you that that's not the way, that's not the way. You gotta sit with your feelings even though they're scary. Especially when they're scary because all of your feelings are an indicator of what's going on deeper down inside. And that deeper down inside is trauma. And trauma comes in all kinds of forms and no one is heavier than the other. You know, people are traumatized for different reasons whether it stems from their youth or their you know, teenage years or whatever it is, um, we all have these patterns, especially in the world that we live in. I mean, there's so much anxiety inducing shit in this world. The news, like they don't even give you accurate information and then just hype up making you scared. So it's like a whole just clusterfuck of emotions. Um, but yeah, breathing techniques also help a lot with anxiety there's just a bunch of different little like tidbits that i have sharing with you my experience um yeah i've always been anxious and then it got hyped up when the fame hit because there's a very particular layer of anxiety that comes with living your life publicly um even though i'm a very private person uh, those of you who know me would know that um I don't share as much as I probably would like to a lot of the time because there's just a huge anxiety about existing and having that just judged so um, unabashedly, like so mercilessly judged. Whether, you know, I'm a, I'm a human being, so I am still learning and growing and I began this journey when I was 16, so I had a lot of learning and growing to do at that age particularly. and throughout that until now my 23 years. And so having that extra layer on top of what I had already been suffering from, I think really pushed me to the point of depression and to the point of the edge where I had to at a certain point, whether I was gonna let my anxiety control me or whether I was going to be the one that dictated how I would address the feelings because the feelings come up you can't like get rid of anxiety and some anxiety is good some anxiety like a little bit of anxiety will remind you that you have to do something a little bit of anxiety will remind you that you should be eating better whatever it is also that's another thing your gut your gut holds a lot of shit and mental fog and indecision all those kinds of things also stem from what you eat so just be aware of that um, as well and conscious of that. But basically, my relationship with my anxiety used to be enemies. Like, you are my enemy. And now I've kind of accepted that it's a part of who I am. 
and it's a part of how I realign myself. And so when it comes up, I sit with it for a few days, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but then I really sit with it and I'm like, where is this anxiety stemming from? Why am I feeling this way? What do I have control over? What do I actually have control over? What is within my control? And anything that's not within my control, I have to let go of. I have to find some way to let go of it, right? So there's different, I have these, um, Dr. Caroline Leaf, I printed it out. <laughs> um, I posted this the other day, but these are just different little affirmations for anxiety that I think are really, really helpful. So the first one says, it feels like this feeling will never pass but I know it will. So these are just little things that you can affirm to yourself. Like I know it feels like this feeling is never gonna go away, but I know it will because I have gotten past it before. Breathing through it, deep breaths through that feeling. I have all the internal and external resources I need to get through this. A lot of the time we feel like some external thing is gonna save us. And I'm here to tell you and remind you that no one but yourself, your higher self, is going to save you. No one but yourself can change your brain. You have to make the decision and have the discipline to follow through. And it's way harder said than done. <laughs> no, for real though, like I, I've been in this constant struggle. Like I have days where I'm really good and I'm like, oh, like today is a really good day. I did not smoke this morning. I, you know, I woke up, I did my meditation, I washed my hair, you know, got my, got my rinse in, and I've just been, you know, I, I read my cards, and I read in general, and when I do stuff, that helps me the most, is when I'm feeling like this, is finding the things that I love. That's also a really great thing. I made a list one time of everything that I love to do that makes me feel calm, right? So for me, smoking weed was, is, <laughs> um, is amazing, by the way. Marijuana has beautiful benefits and is an incredible medicine when used with respect. But I think that I've had this kind of struggle with it where I used it as a security blanket for a long time and habitually it's become my security blanket. So when I don't have it, I feel weird and I don't feel like myself. But when I do have it, I've noticed that I don't feel as cognitively aware or as present as I should be for a lot of the things that I need to be present for in my life. So I've come to a place where I, I've, I'm working on my relationship with it and rewiring those habits. And part of rewiring habits is making a list of stuff that you can do instead. So I made a list of all of the things that I love to do. Like just what do I love to do? What are things that make me happy? What are things that make me excited to be alive? And I wrote them all down and it was it ended up being like a super fucking long list. And then I just realized, wow, there's so many things that I love and that I can dive into and that I can have help relieve my stress. And you know, some days I just don't feel productive and I feel anxious and depressed. So I turn to my self-sabotaging habits. But um, it's cool to have that those little moments of clarity sometimes within that darkness and those waves because they become more waves for me. They used to be, I used to think life was just, oh, I'm up and I'm happy. And when I get there, you better fucking brace yourself because that shit's about to crash. You're going back down. And life is just that. It's an up and a down and an up and a down and an up. And there's never any consistency. I gave up on the idea of consistently feeling safe, you know? And the more you get in touch with your true self, the further away you get from the noise, the more you turn internally, the more that you turn to your own self for all of your answers, the more that shit starts to kind of like plateau, you know? And then, you know, a, a dip will come, but you'll be like, oh shit, there's a dip. What's the dip? And then you can sit with the feelings of the dip and you can be like, oh, um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling really anxious about the fact that I have this deadline coming up and I haven't started any work on it, right? That's, <laughs> that's me. Uh, and then instead of, you know, being like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get that done. I'm so lazy, I'm so this, and like really like getting 
down on myself and talking to myself like a piece of shit <laughs> that I, and by the way, like I would never even talk to my enemy half the way, that, like the way that I talk to myself sometimes. And that I noticed was also a huge part of it. I had to learn how to talk to myself like I'm my friend. And this is still something that I struggle with, but I catch myself on a lot more. You, if the way that you're talking to yourself, if you would not talk to your best friend that way or someone that you love that way, stop it. Nip that shit in the ass and stop it. It's no, it does nothing for you. Like being your own worst critic, all of that kind of stuff. Like I highly, highly recommend that you work um, specifically. That is like a first start is getting that voice in check. That voice that tells you all of the crazy shit and tells you you're this and you're that and you're this and you're that and you're this and you're that. You are what you decide to be. You are your actions and you are your words. You are not all of your thoughts. All of your thoughts are just kind of like floating around in there, but you can pick and choose which ones mean something because they're just kind of like in the blank template until they come out into the world. So when they come out into the world, you make sure those thoughts, especially towards yourself, are kind, loving, and nurturing that's like so important and it's helped me also reduce my anxiety dips a lot um like a lot a lot <laughs> Whew. so let's see what else hmm what else has helped me with my anxiety i just talked for a long time <laughs> all right so i think that that's like a good kind of sum up of what anxiety is where it stems from um, and I think, again, just to touch upon this, I think the main thing that's at the deep root of all of our anxiety, every single one of us, because we've been conditioned, we have been conditioned by the society to think less of ourselves, to think that, to be insecure, especially women, to be insecure, but also men. Men, men are also very insecure. It, and, and folks all, all around, everyone is, feels that way. Um, and the people who have a grip on that are people who have confronted that shadow side of our society and who have worked on their deservability or had a beautiful mentor in their life or guide in their life that instilled that in them. Um, and not all of us are blessed with that, unfortunately. And some of us are blessed with that, but then believe the outside world more, you know, because we feed the insecurity more than we listen to our loved ones telling us how amazing we are. I don't, I know myself is like, if I post something and like I'm scrolling through comments, sometimes I'll like, I'll see all these beautiful, beautiful comments and I'll be scrolling and I'll be like, wow, this is so nice and like, whatever, that one comment comes up that's negative and it like validates the voice in my head and I'm like, fuck. And then I'll focus all my energy on feeling that way, you know? So that's where I've learned to stop myself and really focus on the gratitude, focus on the abundance, focus on how much love I have in my life, how much light and how many blessings I have in my life and just kind of resetting your mind to be in a constant state of gratitude also helps alleviate that anxiety a lot um, and that's not to say it is ever gonna completely go away and I'm gonna say that again and also there's different levels of stuff and some people feel like they need clinical help um, but I will say no one is ever nothing no Medication, nothing will ever help you as much as loving yourself and getting in tune with why you feel the way you do, Will. Because why you feel the way you do is the deep root. You know, all of the other things are band-aids, things that you can stack on top of the problem and you can keep using them. It's fine to use them. I know, Lord knows I have used the shit out of these band-aids. <laughs> but the real work happens and the real healing happens when you sit with those feelings and when you sit with that anxiety and you address the reasons for it. And then you start creating boundaries in your life. And not everyone's going to tolerate or respect your boundaries. Um, but it's very important to start getting in touch with what those boundaries are for you and what will make you feel safer at all times. Because you do not have to endure abusive people in your life, whether that be your family, a partner, a friend, or yourself. You do not have to endure that. You never have to endure that. Ever. Ever, ever. And I know there's some, sometimes, you know, you're younger, you don't have monetary means to get out of an abusive situation. And I respect that. 
Um, and that's that happens. So, but you are entitled to boundaries, and as long as you're keeping safe. And I, I want you to know that. And I want you to know that you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be calm. You deserve to see your life from a higher perspective versus zoning in on the moment and thinking that that's the only, you know, thing there is for you in this world or for what you're going through right now is the only reality that you can manifest. It's not true. And this, the more that you work on getting in alignment with yourself and with spirit, and the more you work on getting in alignment with your purpose and your, your real purpose, you know, not just what you think that you wanted to do because everyone told you you had to be one thing when you grow up. We are multifaceted beings. There are so many different ways that you can express yourself. Never feel limited. Never feel limited. Never feel like if you chose one major, you have to stick to that major because other people will judge you for changing your major five times. Fuck that. Change your major five times until you feel like, you know what? This is it. This is what I was meant to do. And you will know. You will know when you're in alignment. You will feel the difference. I think something else that's helped me is chakra balancing. And I'll go more in depth into crystals and chakras in other episodes, but chakra balancing for me has been really highly effective. I did not realize how out of fucking whack my chakras were until I had this like random epiphany the other day. I was, you know, my throat, my throat, my throat. And I was like, why? You know, I feel like there's more to my lack of communication. There's more to this. So I did like, I had, um, I went on YouTube and I looked up healing throat chakra meditations. And I found this one by, I think it was called Meditative Mind, I believe. Is there YouTube? And they have just a bunch of amazing sound bath oriented um, music. Music, sound bath music <laughs> that focuses on each different chakra. And so I've been doing a lot of healing work with that. And I've been doing, I've been like playing that while I stretch or playing that while I'm doing my hair, or playing that while I'm chilling. Um, and it's really helped reset a lot in me. So that's another little tool that you can use as well if you feel it's appropriate for you. It's a lot of different modalities, a lot of different ways to heal and a lot of different ways to get started. And a lot of what this live is going to be focusing on is that and is the is that capacity that we have to heal and sharing all of these different, you know, methods that I've come across and that I've seen work for other people. So Mia, mommy, oh, she hears people outside, oh my god, okay, so now it's going to be the section where, hold on, let me check my, oh my god, okay, hey, girl, I swear to god, um, okay, so now I'm going to do the portion where we talk, so I'm going to go and live request some of you guys, so you can join me in this conversation. I'm just gonna pick people at super random. So I'm just literally like scrolling and gonna pick you. I see what's up. Waiting, waiting. All right, I'm gonna give you three seconds to answer and then I'm gonna have to move on to someone else. All right, I'm moving. Let's see. Let's try that again. If you have any questions, if you just want to talk about your own feelings, tell me what's up. Hey. Uh, hey. Hey. How are you? So, uh, um, I've been struggling with anxiety for like days. I sent you a message like um, yesterday, <laughs> like um, saying that I wanted you to do a live about anxiety because I've been like suffocating a lot. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, you just started and it's really crazy. I never thought that you would do that. 
or even call me right now. I'm like shaking. <laughs> What's your name, babe? Um, Carolina. Carolina. I'm from Portugal. Yeah. Oh. Nice to meet you, babe. So, how nice to meet you. How are you feeling? What is it that you want to talk with me about? Do you have any questions? Well, or do you have anything that you want to kind of just let off your chest? This is more than welcome as well. Okay, so since I sent you a message um yesterday um about anxiety, I would like to talk about it kind of, okay? Um so I have like some fears, like stupid fears, I guess, like um <laughs> about the world <laughs> about the world and like the future and the past. And the future really scares me because I always think about like the day I'm going to die and I feel like I'm not living like my life um the best way I could like you know like I feel like if I die I won't die happy <laughs> and that messes with my head a lot what do you think kind of drives that feeling I don't know it's weird like since I was like a little girl I've always been scared of like like Death. days rain or yeah exactly too like it's something yeah. that is mortality is kind of super uh, impressionable <laughs> like the yeah, concept it's, it's that we all are very much alive right now and then won't be one day is like really overwhelming especially if you kind of go into that rabbit hole a lot i used to go into that rabbit hole a lot and i still do to be honest like i think contemplating mortality is such a human thing it's like It's the one thing that scares us and, the most. It's what holds us back from doing it. And in this time, like all this, like disease and everything, it's really scary. And like I don't know, it just messed with my head. And I was like, oh my god, Lauren knows so much about this. And I'm actually into like astrology. And I didn't know you were like into astrology. I just saw today your like tarot cards and stuff. And I was like, oh my god, like I need to talk to her. Like I need her to tell. Me. <laughs> something like to make me feel better i don't know it's like yeah, no, it's I weird i mean i again like like i said earlier i feel like um i think it's beautiful that you you know see that kind of power in me i really appreciate that but you see that power in me because it exists in you already you know what i mean and so i feel like when it comes to when you're you know i, I get it right now is a very intense time on a global scale um where you know the disease and the virus and all of these kinds of things are going on so what i want you to do if you can is to focus on ways that you can show up for yourself every day that will help you know guard you from whatever it is like for example when it comes to the virus like what is a, a tangible way that you can be proactive about not getting the virus you know so are you exercising you know the social distancing are you washing your hands are you maintaining your immunity are you you know are you taking I've actually, been home. i've actually been home and like i tried to occupy my mind like I, i actually love music like i play um guitar and i've just like wrote, i wrote a song in portuguese and i put it, like on my instagram and stuff like that And like music is something that really helps me with anxiety. But sometimes I'm like really panicking, you know, like thinking too much. And at night it's really hard to like find something to occupy my my mind. And it's like what you said, you have to like have this thought like I want to get better, you know. And sometimes I feel so comfortable in the pain and anxiety because I already know it for so long, you know. And I'm kind of like scared to be happy, you know what I mean? It's like It's really hard and I know people struggle with it. I'm not alone, but I don't know, it's just it's crazy. I don't no, know. I feel you. I feel you so hard, man. Like I I struggle with the same exact thing. So I and like again, that power that you see in me is exactly the power that exists in you to take a hold of that. And I think that one of the main things is you're talking about occupying your mind. You actually need to do the opposite. You if you can if you could start doing even little like five minute incre increments to start start meditating start trying to meditate and quiet your mind I've tried that too, actually but I feel like i'm not very hard. good at it it's hard i know i'm like add i, yeah. I have like 7000 things i got to get done so i don't have time to sit here and just not do anything i feel you <laughs> but it's really it is it is something that as i've been working with it as a method that i've been working with a lot and i because i want to get good at meditating you know what i mean like 
I don't want to just accept like I'm bad at meditating. I'm not going to do it because I've seen the benefits. I've seen what it does for people. And I've seen and I felt the effects of it as well when I do have those moments that I'm successful in doing so. So if you can just start with something like a guided meditation or put on like I was talking about like the crystal bowl healing stuff. If you look at like healing hey, where like this one actually where is this one one for like love is like rose it's, it's, uh quartz right yeah. Yeah, yeah i was actually seeing yours and i was like talking to a friend i was like oh my god she's wearing the same like she has the same as mine i was like oh my yeah. god <laughs> dude that's beautiful yeah just focus on that and and if you can again like focus your energy on or as much as you can because again i respect the fact that this is a this is a, a struggle we all go through so like there's no pressure at all but just doing little things every day, like make a little promise to yourself, like I'm going to do 10 minutes of meditation today and actually complete that promise. And completing those little tiny, you know, promises to yourself will, first of all, up your self-confidence because it'll make you trust yourself more. And second really of all, hard. it'll help you integrate stuff that's actually healing for you, um, for you to spend your time on, you know, instead of just constantly thinking and feeling like you need to be thinking. So that's, that's a little bit of advice. I'm gonna try that I kind of like tried to write on my journal. I started like some that's weeks ago. And yeah, for sure. And I'm going to just tell you something really fast because I know you want to talk to other people. And I'm really glad that you called me like really super glad. Like, thank you so much. Of course. Um, I just want to say something that is kind of like <laughs> weird and stupid. I don't know. But um, I actually like since 2016 um on tumblr i, I know you don't use it um i know i need to get back on that yeah. um but like <laughs> since that year i started like writing like like you were going to to like read what i was telling you you know like talking about love talking about anxiety talking about so many things and some i just want to say that you helped me somehow you know your music the way you talk about things, like, your mind is amazing. Like, you know things. Yeah, seriously. Like, I just want to thank you so, so much. And I wish you the best. <laughs> For real. I wish you the best. And I hope that the meditation works out. I hope one day when I see you in person, when I do concerts and shit. I hope so. Talk about just your progress. Come to Portugal someday, okay? Of because we've been there yes, 2016. And I saw you, and I saw you in the hotel. So, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. Thank love you, you too. Thank you. Have a good, day. good. Thanks. Cute. All right. Let's do. We'll do a couple more. Let's see what's up. Again, if you have any questions, if you have anything. Else. Hi. 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 <laughs> How are you? Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien. Gracias. ¿Y tú cómo estás? Yo también estoy bien. Gracias. Soy de Brasil. Soy de Brasil. Hola. ¿Hoy? ¿Quién, ¿Quién es esa? ¿Quién te está hablando? Es mi prima. Ay, mi prima. Hi. Pasa así en la playa. Es mi hijada, mira. Es chiquita, bebidita. Hola, so cute. Mi hermana también allá. Mi hermana está ahí. <risa> eh, no sé qué hacer preguntas, porque estaba planeando hacer preguntas, pero ahora que te, que te veo así, no, no sé qué decir, pero... Mm, quiero preguntar. Dale, piensa. Te doy unos cuantos minutitos, dale, piensa. Ok, va. Mm. <risa> Quiero saber, ¿cómo, cuando tú te quedas muy, muy, muy ansiosa, ¿qué haces? Porque una vez en Año Nuevo, espera, voy a salir aquí, mi hija está llorando, espera. Está bien, te entiendo, tengo esta perra que sigue ladrando. <risa> eh, cuando, porque mi mamá una vez tuvo una crisis muy fuerte en Año Nuevo, entonces yo no sabía más o menos qué hacer, solo me acordaba de tus palabras que decía para quedar en calma y todo eso, entonces, tengo, ¿tiene algo más que puedo, no sé, da, me, dame tips para hablar? Para... Tips, bueno, he dado unos cuantos tips, dije como que, re, um, como que valenciando los, los chakras, um, 
o sea, respirando, uh -huh. es importante como tomar un segundito para respirar profundamente, como que like a real deep breath, es importante, unos, unos cuantos, para mí cuando yo tengo, como que estoy en el, en el momento de la ansiedad, uh -huh. me, gusta, me gusta respirar, eso es muy importante para mí, también para mí rezar, es muy importante, uh -huh. darle, darle a Dios todo lo que yo siento, todo lo que estoy, como que me está pasando adentro, porque a veces, y much, muchas veces son cosas que, nos, que no podemos controlar, uh -huh. por, eso, por eso la ansiedad es real, pero también es una, una ilusión de esa manera en que no es real, pero es real lo sientes, pero sí. lo que estás sintiendo tiene más que ver con lo que está pasando dentro en vez de, en vez de como que la ansiedad en particular. O sea, como que no, nosotros vemos ansiedad como una cosa en vez de algo que es parte de nosotros y que, sí. que es más profundo de, de lo que estamos pensando. So, tip para pa mí sería eso rezar y dejar que Dios te quite todo eso y déselo a Dios y dilo, díselo a Dios que, que tú le quieres dar toda tu ansiedad, todo lo que lo, las preocupaciones que tú tienes porque te dijiste que tu mamá tenía algo que hoy tu mamá estaba en crisis sí, sí, estaba en el año nuevo sí o sea, eso, eso, es muy, I mean, eso te, te va te va a quitar o sea, como... en, la yeah, so, en esos momentos de, diría eso que, que, que hagas eso. Porque el día yo quedé muy nerviosa, pero yo dije, no, Lauren dice para hacer estas cosas. Entonces, ah, ¿verdad? sí, mira, perfecto. <ríe> sí, Entonces, sí. Sigue en eso, sigue con eso y, y vea, um, como haga una búsqueda a, a ver lo, otros métodos que se eh, sí. usar y, y entender y aprender, porque hay, hay muchas, difer muchas diferentes cosas que puedo hacer para, para ayudar. Sí, pero gracias. Tú me ayudas mucho, mucho. Todos los días de mi vida yo pido a Dios para que te bendiga, para que te proteja, porque te amo mucho, mucho, mucho. Tú eres como que el amor de mi vida, en serio, de verdad. <risa> te amo, sí. mamá. Gracias, mamá. De nada. Dios te bendiga. Te amo. A, a ti también, te amo mucho. Y tu familia, mamá. Chao, cuídate. Besos. Cuídate también. Cutie. Um. Sorry for those of y'all who don't speak Spanish, but that was like the only Spanish part for my, my Spanish babies. <laughs> All right, let's do, I can do like a couple more. I can do two more. Guys, you know what song I've had stuck in my freaking head? Oh my God, wait, hold on, my friends. Messiah. Messiah. Yes. Hello. <laughs> My angels. <laughs> We've been watching all morning. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not morning. <laughs> all day. Introduce yourselves. Introduce yourselves so the people I know. am Messiah. I'm Little Wind. And uh, we're on the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming. Um, We're to talk about anxiety. <laughs> Perfect, appropriate moment probably for y'all. Um, Please speak your mind. Tell the people what you got to tell them. Well, I think that I just wanted to share, like, a little bit about fear and um, also being collective beings and living in right now a time where there's so much fear going on in the world and so if anyone's feeling heightened levels of anxiety and feeling like things have just gone like overboard in this time I uh, just want to remind people that they're not alone because actually you're just picking up on what the world is feeling and um, in that like just to piggyback off what Lauren's been sharing with you all this morning is that's the power that we have to transform and shift our thoughts from that fear mentality mm -hmm. into like this really beautiful space of like what we want right now. It's an opening for us on this earth. And so we can all collectively start to envision. So like I invite you all to continue to come and join these lives and listen to what Lauren's sharing and listen to all the positive, collect all the positivity that you can around you yep, mm -hmm. from every direction. Like Dante. Like yep. Just all of them. <laughs> just align, line it all up, and yeah, alignment without your sure, For sure, alignment. I feel like is the 
the key in all of this is us as a collective getting in alignment with what you know humanity truly needs in order to progress towards a space where we're all taken care of versus just the select few um, that we've all been so used to having taken care of <laughs> versus us. Um, and especially for individual growth and, you know, because we can't grow as a collective until we each show up as an individual, you know, like the collective is, is just a, you know, majority expression, you know? So if we're all living in that, space of fear and chaos at all times and you know taking what the government says into account when we're talking about truth <laughs> um we're all going to end up staying in that space of of anxiety and a collective anxiety can't possibly lead anywhere positive so definitely focusing on getting our own energies aligned so that we can show up as that other side of humanity that's ready to take on whatever yeah. Yeah, and we have such a beautiful job right now as our generation, and for all of you that are younger than us, even though we're still pretty young. <laughs> right, we're like 23. <laughs> babies and more babies. Yes. More babies. babies. Um, it just, we know what, what doesn't work, you know. We've gotten to observe what hasn't worked for our parents, for our grandparents, and still, and yet that's still the narrative that they're pushing, you know. They're saying, do things that you don't enjoy so that you can have what you need but really what you need yeah exactly it's like what do we need we need to feel good and we need to be able to show up in our true authentic selves and bring our gifts to the table you know we're all here for a purpose and so taking that time is the most vital thing you can do in life to find out what that is and what you're here to offer because then everyone can celebrate your life and you can celebrate your life and it's just feels way better you know like let's break the cycle of doing shit we don't want to do and Amen. let's do what we love to do all together yeah. <laughs> definitely beautiful words Zara. thank you so much i love you i love you so much thank you for tuning in love, love you, you. <laughs> bye baby see you yay i love my friends they're so brilliant <sighs> okay Let's do one more. And I choose you. Oh, wait. What the heck? Hold on. What the heck? Why can't I choose? I can't select things right now. It's being difficult. All right. Here we go. My hair's drying up. Hi! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't believe it! <laughs> I'm in your life! Hi! Hi! I'm from Peru! Yeah! Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, ¿cómo estás tú? Bien aquí, en este live. <laughs> <laughs> estoy en cuarentena en mi casa. Ah, yo también estoy en cuarentena. Sí, sí, sí. Todavía aquí con Cleo. Haciendo oraciones. <risa> wow, de verdad no puedo creer que esté en tu live. <risa> yeah, no sé qué preguntarte. Un comentario, algo? ¿Qué bueno, solo te quiero decirte que me encantan tus canciones, de verdad. Eh, empecé a escucharte hace poco. De verdad, te escuchaba desde que estabas en Fifth Harmony. Y tus canciones de ahora son increíbles, de verdad. Me encantan. Muchas gracias, mamá. Gracias. De verdad. Me alegro que, que te sientas, que te gusten. <risa> Voy a hacer... No, tu, Voy a tu hacer... voz cantando en español es increíble. Ay, gracias, mamá. Es que... gracias, no me puedo creer, mamá. de verdad, no me puedo creer. Yo dije, voy a enviar esta solicitud y no creo que me la acepten. Y me la aceptaste, esto es increíble. ¿Qué? No te puedo ir. ¿Qué dices? Ah, me envié esta solicitud y creía, va a haber un montón de gente que la envía, no la va a aceptar. Y me aceptaste, de verdad, esto es súper. I know. Es, así, así es que pasan las cosas, Dios. Sí. Gracias, de verdad. Bueno, espero que te estés cuidando en esta cuarentena, porque la situación está más o menos. No sabemos si va a acabar pronto. Grave. Eh, sí, espero también que, que acabe pronto. Pero te estoy mandando luz y amor y gracias por apoyarme, amor. Súper, súper gracias. Y cuando voy para Perú, espero verte. Gracias. Ojalá vengas a Perú, de verdad. Si vienes en tu gira, voy a ir, de verdad. Qué bueno. Me alegro. Igual, te envío mucho amor. Gracias. Chao. Sí. Chao.
Yay. Okay, I actually, I'm going to do one more. One more. I'm going to do one more. See if we can get some English in here one more time. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Is this who I think it is? Hold up. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. This hair, Jesus Christ. Come on, come on. We're waiting for you, baby. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, maybe they left a lot. Sorry about that. I really, I hope, Nicole, I swear to God, if this is you and you didn't pick up, I'm gonna be pissed. But whatever. Let's try this again. Who are you? Hola, mi amor, ¿cómo estás? Hola, bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien, soy de São Paulo. ¿Desde São Paulo? Sí, sí. Qué bueno, ¿cómo estás? Te amo ¿Cómo muchísimo. Te ¿Cómo estás? ¿Tu cuarentena? Sí, sí, pues. <laughs> Ay, qué bueno verte, te amo mucho. Gracias, amor, te amo también. ¿Tienes una cuando... pregunta? ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿Algo que quieres hablar sobre? ¿Cuándo sale el edad? próximo single? Disculpa. ¿Cuándo sale tu próximo single? Oh, you know what? I did say I had an announcement, so maybe this is the announcement moment. I just said I had an announcement. So, announcement, announcement, everyone. I have a new single dropping on Friday. <laughs> ¿Cuándo vienes? ¿Cuándo vienes a Brasil? ¿Qué te gusta más? Um, ¿Cuándo vengo a Brasil? ¿Cuándo te, cuando vienes a Brasil, ¿qué te gusta más hacer acá? Oh, comerme pan, pan de queso. Pan like, de queso. All day. Yo me como pan de queso como desde cuando me despierto hasta que me duermo. Es... Es un, una, una obsesión, en serio. ¿Una obsesión? <risa> ya ya sí, pues, y también a... las playas son tan, tan hermosas. Qué bueno. Te, te fui, fui a tu concierto en Brasil, en São Paulo. Qué bueno, gracias. Oh, so, ¿Tú estás aquí en esta? Sí, sí. Sí, el de Hope Fountain Kingdom. Qué bueno, me alegro. Gracias por estar conmigo, apoyarme y todo. Gracias a ti. Te amo muchísimo. ¡Mua! Espero que nos vemos pronto. Sí, sí, nos veremos. ¡Mua! Chao, mi amor. Besos. Besos. All right, so another announcement, everyone. I don't know if y'all took note of that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna re announce it here officially. Um, I have a new single coming out on Friday. It's called 50 Feet. You heard it here first. And I love this song. This song is it means a lot to me and i i put the like really really <coughs> are you gonna ruin my announcement jesus Ugh, okay i wrote this song <laughs> with uh trey campbell and jay pounds is the producer and they're both incredible creatives and writing with trey is i just i love writing with trey he just gets me and nourishes me and helps me just bring out exactly what I have inside of me and shape it in such a beautiful way. So uh, yeah, that's coming on Friday. And I hope you guys are ready because bitch, I'm going to keep coming for your neck. <laughs> um, anyways, I hope that you guys had... <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this live. I hope that you were able to gain some clarity um, or just kind of relate, if nothing else, to the whole situation with the whole anxiety situation. Um, I'm sending you guys so much love. Cleo, please. I'm trying to sign off. Okay, 
this barking ass dog. Hold on. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go yet. I have to do a proper goodbye. She's still gonna fucking bark. But at least she's gonna be far away from us. So she'll bark out there. Anyways. Um, I hope that this live was insightful for you. I hope it helped validate anything that you were feeling. Um, you are absolutely not alone. We as a collective are deconstructing what we thought was true and reigniting the real truth, which is that you are a powerful being of light. You have a destiny, a purpose, and don't let anyone, especially yourself, deter you from that truth. Know that, accept that, live that, breathe that, and write a list of all of the things that you love to do besides self-sabotage. That's your homework. Write, write a list. And I wanna see the lists, actually. I wanna see all of your lists. Write down a list of everything that you love to do that's healthy for you. Things that you love, 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 love doing. Whatever it might be. It might be like, like I love swimming. I love going to the ocean. I love playing with Cleo when she's not being annoying as fuck. <laughs> I love um, painting. I love music. So I love listening to music. I love healing. I love reading. Just, those are just examples. So make a list and don't stop until you feel like you really got everything that you love to do out. And then look at that list every day and pick one thing to do. Pick one thing. And when you ever you feel your anxiety, look at that list and see if there's anything that you could do that'll help soothe it. All right, that's it. That's my um, TED Talk for the day. Dr. Lauren, out. I love you. See you next week. Next weekend on Sunday, we're gonna have another live attunement at 3, 3, 3 p.m. Again, it's gonna be consistent. So tell your friends, tell your mother, tell your cousins, tell anyone who needs a little bit of spiritual food and a little bit of love and light in their life. Shit, we all need it. So stay safe. I love you. <laughs>